it's unboxing time again and if i have a stupid grin on my face i've been walking around with this giddy elation for a couple of days someone who's a fan of my website and my youtube channel asked me to share my amazon wish list with him and i keep a lot of small things on my wish list so that if i want to order something and bring the total cost up to 35 dollars to get free shipping i don't subscribe to prime um, then i'll add one or two of these small items so i thought that's what he was going to send me you know a, a three dollar item here five dollar item there well he sent me four items one of which will arrive tomorrow um he might have been wondering what I wanted it for. Why was it on my wish list? It was a tube of McKesson um, lubricating jelly. I think of it as medical lubricant. Um, those of you who have watched my previous kitchen vlogs, you know that uh, a year and a half ago or so I had, um, yeah, about a year and a half ago, I had prostate surgery. And ever since then, um, because of other issues, uh, things that I did wrong, but I ended up having to do self catheterization to empty my bladder i gotta insert a catheter and sometimes it doesn't go in as easily as other times but if i lube it up with this um, lubricating jelly it'll go in easier and i'll have less problems using it so um, that's what the other thing was for the other things he got me he got me this this is a, a strap wrench. He might have wondered, what does he want a strap wrench for? I have a whole house water filter on my home because the water in this place where I live in, in the trailer park is awful. I'll put a white filter in there and a year later when I change the filter, it'll come out a dark maroon red, almost black. It's because of all the rust in the pipes. I don't want that in my water. So I have that filter on there, but getting the casing off to change the filter, which I'll probably do later this month, uh, especially now that I have this, getting that casing off is kind of difficult. I'm thinking this might be a little bit easier to get that filter off and tighten it back on again when I change the filter. He also got me this. <laughs> he likes spicy hot food. He knows I don't, but he ordered, and this was not on my wish list. He ordered me a jar of Korean barbecue, original sauce. Uh, perfect for ribs, which is good because I have ribs in my freezer and I want to try this. You know what? I'm going to try it now. Pull the lid off. Oh, there's a seal on there that I've got to take off. Let's see. I'll open up part of it. And then I have my red handle tasting spoon. If you're not familiar with this, I use this in my cooking videos. It reminds me that once it's been in my mouth, it doesn't go back into the food. But this is clean. All right, let's see what this sauce is. It's got a nice consistency to it. Mmm. That smells really good. That's... <laughs> Here goes. How hot is this? Actually, no, it's very good. Very, very mildly spicy. A lot of other good flavors in there. It's sweet. I can detect soy sauce. There's onion or green onion, scallion in there. Well, that's good. That's really good. That's going to that's be really good on ribs. So thank you for the temptation to lure me to the hot stuff. <laughs> okay. Why am I really here? Because of this box here. This has been what I've been giddy about for the last couple of days. So let's get this open. Show you what I've got here. Okay, get the other side. There, now I can open it up. Got a packing list in there from Amazon. We'll set that aside. There it is. 
All right, let me get the box out of the way. Is there anything else in here? No, it's empty. I'll just push that down there. Okay. All right, let's get a little bit focused on this. This is made in France, a mat for however you pronounce that, bougie, whatever it is, um, carbon steel skillet. I have been wanting one of these for so long, and um, but I've been resisting buying them because, buying one, because um, I have some other skillets. They're non-stick. But the problem with non-stick skillets is they don't they don't stay non-stick for very long. You get maybe a year or two use out of them, and you have to toss them out. That seems like a waste. I mean, it goes into the recycling bin, so it does get recycled, but almost like a waste of money. But there is my pan. Feels really good. Um, Things about this pan, it's almost 12 inches. I think it's 11 and 7 eighths of an inch. Um, carbon steel, so it does have to be seasoned inside and out. I believe you can season the handle as well. Um, it doesn't have the kind of bulging rivets that other pans have. So you don't have to, can I show you an example? Not really. Um, they're up there and I don't want to take them down. But um, th they, they weld the uh, handle on so it's smooth here it's easier to keep clean so are there any directions with this instructions for seasoning your mat for black steel doesn't look black but it's it's I, I know it's a good pan recommended by America's test kitchen this is their most recommended pan so let me read this and then we'll talk about seasoning. So there it is, washed and dried with paper towels. There's one thing I wanted to look for first, though. Some of the earlier pans, if they weren't heated right, would sometimes bow down from the bottom, and it would create what some people call a spinner. So you could tap the pan, and it would go wee around and around and around, like a merry-go-round. OK. Supposedly, the newer style is made slightly concave in the center. And by putting a straight edge on it, like this rule. Yes, I can see it. What is that, about a sixteenth of an inch, maybe one or two millimeters? I don't know. But yes, it's slightly pressed up in the middle. OK, they say to cook potato peel in there or sliced potatoes with plenty of salt. I don't, but I've got an old onion here. Um, I'll use that. All right, I've got some onion because I think I saw somewhere someone said uh, you could use onion if you don't have potatoes. I'm going to start heating this up. But from what I saw on YouTube, it's best not to go too much too soon the first time you use the pan. So I've got this set for 155 degrees. Okay, this appears to be up to temperature, so I'm going to come up to just above the boiling point. I'm going to go up to simmer, 225 degrees, and let that continue heating. Now I'm going to add some oil. I'm using safflower oil. I'm going to talk more about safflower oil in a bit. I'm not seasoning at this point. That's shimmering. That's good. Um, and again, I'm going to use some onion in there. And then they said plenty of salt. And I can bring that up higher if I need to. You're obviously not going to use this onion for anything. You can tell by those dark brown pieces. I didn't even bother to peel the onion since this is going to go in the trash. I just turned the heat off on this. I'm going to let this cool down. 
And then what you do supposedly is you repeat the process a second time. A couple of things that might be worth mentioning at this point. Now there's my pan. It's slightly colored, but this is far from being seasoned. It's got a ways to go yet. Why the onions or the potato peels? From what I could see online, that's supposed to like moderate even out the heat so you don't get any hot spots. Why the salt? The salt acts as an abrasive to remove any coating that might still be on the pan. I wiped this out. I rinsed it. Did not use any soap on it yet. I just rinsed it with water and then wiped it with paper towels. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to heat it on low to about 100 degrees, I guess. 90 to 100 degrees. Let's go up to 100. I can adjust by temperature here. And I'm going to let this go for a few minutes, maybe 5, 10 minutes. There, it's up to temperature just to make sure there's no more water anywhere on this pan before I actually season it. So my pan now has been on 100 degrees. It is not too hot to touch. I mean, it sort of is, but it's... I wouldn't want to keep my hand on there, but I can, I can touch that pan. All right, first of all, to season the pan, you do not use an induction cooker. And the reason why is because the induction cooker only causes the bottom of the pan to heat up. It doesn't heat up the sides. Get some salt off there. Um, so you either want to do it over a big flame, such as the biggest burner on your gas stove, or in the oven, because you want to surround it as much as possible with heat. If you want to season the handle as well to keep it from rusting, the best way to go is the oven. So let's talk about oil. You need two things when you're seasoning a pan, whether it's carbon steel or, I'll show you in a minute, cast iron. You need temperature that has a high smoke point, so you don't want to use butter, you don't want to use extra virgin olive oil, and you want something that has a high percentage of something called linoleic acid. And what the linoleic acid does at high temperature, it smokes and it, it glues itself to the pan, to put a coating on the pan. This does two things. One, it protects the iron or the steel from rusting and it creates a non-stick surface. The best oil I can think of to use is safflower oil. And the reason why I say safflower is because it has a very high smoke point between 450 and 500. I've got a chart. I put together a chart of um, information I found on the internet. Safflower oil, 450 to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. The only one that's higher is avocado oil, and that's 480 to 520 if it's refined oil. However, the second thing, linoleic acid, is this again because this has, from what I could see on the internet, 78% linoleic acid, whereas avocado oil has only 16%. So I want to use this oil for my seasoning. Now, when seasoning a carbon steel pan, it's not going to season like cast iron. Let me show you something. Here's a griddle, cast iron griddle. This has been through a few seasonings, beautifully black very nicely taken care of. That's Lodge. I use this for cooking tortillas on when I'm making my own tortillas. I'll also use it for making a griddle pizza. Here's a really old one. This could be done again. This was given to me because it was so badly messed up. It was, I guess it had been on fire. They set it on a nylon towel. The towel melted and just glued itself to the pan. I put some work into this and, um, stored it. It's a small pan, could probably be stripped and done again, but hey, it works. All right. So you're not going to get this on this the first time you season it, but you want to get it seasoned to get that polymer on there so that it will become non-stick. And you do that by putting ever so little oil 
on the pan. Have some paper towels ready. You're going to need that. Spread the oil around all over the pan. Oh, and meanwhile, I'm going to heat my oven up to 500 degrees, maybe 525 if it'll go that high. I'm going to spread this on the handle as well. Around, around, around. Okay, that's too much oil. That's why you want paper towel. So you want to get all that excess off. You want to put such a thin film on there that it has a bit of a shine. Even looks a little bit wet. But see, I can see some streaks. That's not dry enough yet. That's much better. If you see streaks of oil, it's not evenly oiled. The coat isn't thin enough. And therefore, it's going to be blotchy. And those areas will be gummy and sticky. You want it to be as little oil as possible. Okay. Do the other side. You don't need much. I just use my hand to smear this around. This is not a caustic oil. This is actually a cooking oil. Again, get the handle done. And again, wipe it down. I may use a new, a cleaner piece of paper towel to finish that, since this paper towel's got quite a bit of oil in it already. Okay, one more. Wipe down. I'm not too worried about the outside because I'm not going to be cooking on the outside. I don't care about it being um, non-stick. What I care about is it being coated so that it doesn't make sure there's no spots of oil on the counter so that it doesn't rust. All right, I'm happy with that. That's just very, very lightly oiled. I'm going to put that in a 525 degree oven upside down in there like that. And I'm going to leave it in the oven for one hour. So how does it look? After one seasoning, that's with the safflower oil in the oven for one hour and then left to cool down naturally in the oven. Not bad. It almost looks like it's annealed. It was silvery before. Now it's, um, it's almost black. Now it's not going to look, as I mentioned earlier, it's not going to look as nice as cast iron. But that's not the point. At this point, what we really care about is is it non-stick and will that coating be good enough to keep it from rusting so the next step is to do the proverbial fried egg test while the pan is heating up i want to mention one thing i used um, safflower oil but a very popular oil for people to use is grapeseed oil will it work as well by all means it's a high temperature oil, not quite as high as safflower oil. According to my numbers here, grapeseed oil ranges between 390 and 420 degrees Fahrenheit to get to the smoke point, but it's 73% linoleic acid. Safflower oil is 78%, so it's right up there near the top. If you've got grapeseed oil, by all means, feel free to use it. Okay, I'm gonna heat up my pan to say I don't know, 250, I guess. We've got it warming. What's a good temperature to cook an egg? Let's go to 250. 250, I think, is um, like medium. All right, this has come up to temperature. I'm going to put a, a nice wad of butter in there. Let's see spatula here I guess it's another thing about these pans you don't have to use plastic or wood utensils and this will last generations with proper care and cleaning this will be good for a long time okay let's break an egg in there and 
And I got a shell in there. And I broke the yolk. And because my eggs tend to spit, I'm going to put a splatter screen on it. Hear that? That's what makes a mess. Okay. I think I'm ready to try turning this. But the first thing to see is, will it slide around like a hockey puck? No, it does not. I've got some sticking. I'm not disappointed because they say you should cook on it fairly often and eventually it'll build up its non-stick surface. But that's not bad. So there it is for a first test. I have to say I was quite pleased with how it came out, with more use, that pan's gonna become more non-stick. One of the recommendations they say is to cook some high protein meats in it, like hamburger. I have some hamburger patties. I like to have cheeseburgers once in a while. So I will be doing that. As far as my eggs, my egg. Tastes like an egg to me.